So check it out. Here we go. It is the tutorial for getting your UI the way that I get my UI in my RAID videos. And so to start off, I'm just going to show you this one add-on that is pretty sweet. It's called Add-on Control Panel. So essentially when you install it, whenever you press the escape key, it adds this like little button here where you can go into your add-ons. So every add-on that I have is listed in here but you can use sets. So I've got like different sets for different things. So my auction sets, I'll go ahead and reload. And you can just switch add-ons like right during the whole, uh, like staying in the game basically, you can switch between different add-ons. So these are all of my auction things. So when I go to do, so it's like auctioneer and auctionator basically in my Bagnon, um, bartenders, there so all of my abilities are there if I need them for some reason but for my um, AH alts and stuff like that it's useful to be able to switch to this but if I need to go and buy something I could just switch into this profile but I've got like different raids and stuff like that like raid con configurations so the one that I am going to focus on is the light raids which is designed basically to shut off all the stuff in there that would cause any sort of add-on problems. So like right now you can see I'm running 12 megs worth of add-ons. So switching into this, we go up to 26 megs, but it's not like some people that are running 60, 70 megs worth of add-ons. They just have everything turned on. So this is my general raid setup and there's a couple of key features on, on this that I'm going to go through, but one of them is power auras. And that's probably the most predominant one, but maybe we will get to that after I talk about Tuck. Tuck UI is the UI that gives um, a raid frame over here on the left with like a list of the people that are in the raid. But it basically is this clean add-on that just takes everything and puts it into its nice little detail and stuff. So all of this over here is the way that these boxes are set up to is also part of it but you know anyway so tuck UI if we go into tuck UI you can set up your scale which is good because I, I like to change my video resolution and stuff like that so if you do auto scale it usually makes it pretty big I like to just set it myself um, I don't enable nameplates uh, I'll have it sell my gray air items and auto repair for sure. That's a good use. Bags. I disable the all-in-one bag for for Tuck UI because it sticks it over here. So like it it stays in one spot, and I like Bagnon because with Bagnon I can move it wherever I need it. So if I'm doing like a lot of stuff, I can move some things around. Um, I don't mess with that part of the unit frames. I mean, you can go in and you can can figure a bunch of different things here if you want. Um, it's nice to auto greed on green items, you know, when you're level 80, and uh, that's that's actually pretty useful because you're not constantly clicking. Um, I like the map, so I usually just enable it. A lot of people use sexy map, like whatever you want to do. You can disable the map so that it's not there. So if you want to use sexy map, you can. Invite, auto enable, so always take an invite from a guildy and a friend. Uh, Tooltips pretty useful. Uh, auto release in battleground can be bad if you're in a raid because it, it actually auto releases you. Um, so that's not so good. Uh, aura warning is nice. It will warn you if, like for example, you know, like when I'm maging it up, my molten armor f falls off during a raid and can't go, hey, you know, warning. So then I can just put it up right away, which is pretty useful. I mean, I, s I still have something for power auras for that when it happens. But uh, we'll get into that in a second. Um, 
I can hide the spamming of error at the middle of the screen if I want to, but I, I like to see it. If there's a problem, I like to know what it is. Quests, you know, there's there's a bunch of different things in here, but um, um, I d I don't enable the Tuck UI chat because it messes with Pratt, and I like Pratt, so I just use that. Cooldowns, cooldown number on buttons is pretty good. Um, that's useful, so you know if I'm using something and it has a cooldown, it's there. Okay, so going to power auras. So power auras slash power. I like to break this up into two sections. Uh, the first page that I'm using does, um, this is the enemy target health. So when my target's below 22%, it's gonna put that plus up. When um, I'm running low on mana, this blue circle appears. I mean, I've had that different I use different auras for that. So getting it, I'll just show you how this actually works. So I have glow set and I'm using a wow texture number three, which is that circle. You can change it to different things, but I've used this one in the past, but I find it pretty obstructing. So I like number three, it's like pretty smooth looking. Um, the opacity I can change if I want, you know, I, I'd almost say you should have that 100% actually. Symmetry for certain ones you can deform them and you can change the way that they're oriented on the screen if you want but uh, for this purpose it's useful you can set the size I like to have it fairly large so that it's very noticeable during a raid encounter that I'm going um, on a mage it's not gonna happen on this mage I've I don't recall going um on this mage once yet so this mage is like uh, you know not even maybe one week old now <laughs> Anyway, so what this is doing is it's activated by mana. There's a list of different things that you can activate this. So for this one, it's saying when my when my mana is below 24%, this is gonna come on. And I've gotta be alive for this. So when I'm dead, this is not gonna turn on when I'm dead because who cares, right? I have this set for spec one and spec two. So both of my specs use this, this particular aura. Most of the power auras that you see people use um, are very graphical. But I like text as well, and we'll get to that in a bit. This is an example of a text aura. It's this one here, down here, where it says stun. And how it works is you just go into this area where it says text aura, and you type in the word stun. You set the opacity that you like. You set the font that you like. For me, I like using uh, Arial in. Just, it works great. So I always use that font now. Uh, that's the font that I'm always using. The size, 98%, I could go bigger or smaller if I want, but there's a certain level where it won't let you make it much bigger than it is. So, The X and Y position, so it's at 20 and minus 266. You can move those around to move it if you want, but you know, I, I just like where it was, so I'll just leave it there. So this is a debuff type, and it's on the enemy target. So you can do... Curses, poisons, magic, CC, silence, stun, snare, root, whatever. And then it lets you know that, that whatever you have targeted that's an enemy, they're stunned during this period. So it's it's nice to know because as soon as that falls off, then you know that maybe if you have aggro or something like that, the thing's going to come after you. Or if you're in BGs or something, you know somebody's stun locked so that you can hold off on your stun and then you can apply your, your whatever your stun ability is after their stun falls off. And it, the other thing it's doing is there's a counter underneath of it, and that's um, a timer. So it shows how much, like how long are they gonna be stunned for. And again, you can move that around using this area, not up here. If I use this up here, it's gonna move the word stun. Now that's fallen off the screen because it, I guess, ran out of time or something, but anyway. I use crystal as the timer texture because it's just clearer and I like to show the hundredth. I use transparent frames because if I don't it's blocky so I like to use that. And you can put a sound if you want to, I don't particularly want to on this one. I might get into sounds at some point. Cer certain abilities that I have are good, like I, I like to use a sound for them, but we'll get to that later. The buff type again there is a CC. So these are just some of the power auras that you may see pop up during an encounter. This one is really good. This is just how you put a crosshair. I use two crosshairs on my um, 
on my tune, one's green and one's red. And the reason for that is because sometimes you're in an encounter that's predominantly red and you won't see a red crosshair. It's always good to know when you're at, like I'm, this is usually how I'm rating is at max view angle. So that always appears at my feet. So when I'm like running around, I like to know where my tune is and, and you know, around the raid. Having that crosshair around where my feet is, it tells me where to stand, which is really useful. And the way to do it is you just put garbage in here and you detect it as a buff. Make sure it's something that can't appear in the game or else, <laughs> you know, your crosshair will disappear if it shows up. And then you just use the invert flag. So I'm, all I'm doing is I'm dispa displaying a little thing around my feet. I'm at max zo zoom angle. So usually in a raid encounter, this is where I'm going to be. And I'll ignore the case. I'll invert it. Let's, let's look at this one too. So it's the exact same thing, except a different circle. So that's, that's where I get my, you know, I, I played Quake for many years and I like the fact that there's a crosshair so you know where you're shooting. In this, you know, Quake's a first person shooter. This is, wow. It's nice to know where your feet are for running or roughly, you know, like, so it's easy to move around. And uh, to set this up again, it's just a wow texture. It's a certain position and size place there. It's a buff, it's checking for this. If it finds this, it won't display it because it's inverted. And if it doesn't find it, it will display it. Next one is my snare debuff. So whenever there's a snare, whenever my target is snared, that's what it'll show. So it's again the same. I'm checking the enemy target for a debuff, a debuff. And this is kind of neat. I like this, this little, you'll see this on some of my videos. What this is, is this is just telling me what spec I'm in. So when I'm in spec two, this will appear. When I'm in spec one, you won't see this. And it's nice to know that because like if you go into a raid and you're accidentally in your PVP spec, I put like something like this for my demo lock. I have this on. So when I'm in demo, I'm doing this. This will be on the screen. And when I'm in affliction, it won't be. And in PVP, if I'm in my PVP gear uh, for spec, for that it'll be a thumbs up usually <laughs> so just to let me know that I'm actually in the right spec this is my aggro um, warning and the nice thing about this is it's not really in a place where you notice it very much but it does flash if you get if I get aggro and somebody aggro with me it'll flash and so essentially it's this texture it's sized a certain way and it's actually an aggro check it's just checking to see if I have aggro. So all I have to be is alive, you know. I want to know if I get aggro at any time. But the nice thing about this is I've got the sound to play for this, which is that sound, the shot sound. So you hear that in my videos going off a lot. A lot of times when ads spawn, they'll immediately target everybody in the raid just quickly because they're not sure who they're going to attack. And then they'll get taunted. So you'll see that pop up and then it'll, it'll, you know, the ad will get taunted away. But if it stays up, like, so if I notice <laughs> I'm still getting aggro, I'll know because my, um, my nameplate add-on, uh, uh, tidy plates will show me that I still have ag aggro and, you know, that I can move away. But anyways, more, okay. These are the checks that I do for Ebon uh, Plague, okay. And, you know, this is just one of them that I'm checking. These are just raid debuffs that are going on the add-on, or going on the, the mob, okay? So these are pretty important. Okay, so, sorry, I just had a phone call there. Um, okay, so back to even Plague Bringer here and Earth and Moon. And uh, what's the other one? There. So you notice these are all the same. So Curse of the Elements, okay, Earth and Moon, and Ebon Plaguebringer are the same icon. And those those three abilities, when they're on my target, um, at times, like when I'm playing lock, if that check mark's not there, and I'm in a 10-man or something like that, so s somebody's not putting the magic debuff up. So to get more magic bonus, I'll throw up COE. 
just whether or not that if that check marks there I'm not gonna throw a COE I'm gonna use my curse of agony uh, on my lock so you know there's not much on the maze that you can do but you'll notice in the RS 10 heroic video that we didn't have that the whole time so our magic damage was 13% lower than it would have been um, so anyways the next we have this is fairy fire we're looking for in misery so this is the hit a bonus now all of my tunes are geared so that our hit rate like the hit rating is a is in the party and um, this is dependent like I have to have that hit up there or else I'm gonna be missing and you'll notice in the RS 10 heroic that um, in the video that sometimes my uh, mirror images will miss that's actually a molten bug they're supposed to hit if you're hit capped but they don't uh, they miss because they're not getting that that bonus. So anyway, so increases your spell chance to hit um, a target of level 80 by 11.5 for mage because I have a talent that gives me 3% and then plus another 3% from this. It's useful. But anyway, so that just tells me so that I know if somebody hasn't put it up, I could call it out and say, hey, come on, guys, let's get a hit debuff on the, on the boss or something or... If I know there's a lock in the raid and they're not putting COE up and we don't have the magic thing up, I can say something too. What I'm checking for here is I'm checking for Arcane Brilliance. If it's not up on me, you know, chances are... So again, it's it's an invert. It's a buff. So when it's not there, I want to see it here in red. So it tells me that that buff is worn off. Okay. The next one is my scroll. So I'm checking for Spirit. I put cast by me because somebody else might put a spirit or something or spell on me. I don't know. You know, I just have it so it's cast by me, so I'll know. So I put the word scroll. So this again up here is the text uh, or a first scroll. I just put the word scroll and then I'm checking for the buff of spirit. So here I'll show you what that looks like right now. So. I'm using a uh, scroll of spirit and that way I always have that on and they're, the scrolls are handy they stack with everything they're good to use so back to power power auras but slash p-o-w-a to open this so I'm checking well fed I'm checking for the buff well fed cast by me as well and I'm checking for flask cast by me as well so again invert says okay display this if it's not there so if I'm in the middle of the fight and flask falls off like you'll see now I don't have a flask but I am well fed but as soon as I click off well fed food comes up so it's telling me to get some food during a fight you can't do anything about that so you know what you could do is and actually I will do this is go if I'm in combat don't check so that's that's what that means so now it's only going to check when i'm not in combat because you know if food comes up there what's the point you can't do anything about it when you're fighting a boss so these are the main the main uh sort of things that i'm that i'm doing for power auras just for checks and things like that now that these are all left over from my warlock i actually copied this over when i started the mage so let's look at my actual mage abilities now and we've got so when I get hot streak so again it's just checking for hot streak and when it comes up I get this and you see that in the raid video so whenever I have hot streak that that uh, sort of nice orange triangle set pops up so if molten armor falls off so again invert meaning if this buff is not there show me this gra graphic so this will come up if my molten armor fa falls off um, and then it's cast by me as well, and it's in both specs. Um, living bomb. So the word living bomb here, essentially all I'm doing is I'm saying, okay, if the enemy target doesn't have a debuff called li living bomb that is cast by me, I want to see this word show up, living bomb. So you'll notice it during the Ruby Sanctum encounter that living bomb was sh popping up there this is how I did it and you know it's not it's not an add-on that automatically does it for you you have to configure it so for your spells and abilities to do that now I had scorch up but we don't scorch because there's always somebody there doing it 
I'll scorch if I notice that that, that you know, I don't know. Maybe, maybe I should put that back on, just in case, but I don't know. We're, we, we usually have somebody that's doing uh, critical damage bonus there, but, you know, I don't know. Anyway, combustion. So whenever combustion's up, you know, I'm checking for combustion. Whenever the action is usable, so this one I'm checking to see, hey, can I use combustion right now? So that's checking cooldown, but it's also checking whether or not it's possible for me to put it up. Now there's two of them that I have for ice block. One is, I'll do this one first over here. So the activation for ice block, so it starts off, it's just checking for ice block, and it's checking to see if the action is usable. It's a text aura that's gonna say ice block. So I made it the color that I wanted, you know, you, this little thing here is where you change colors of the words. And I made it the color that it, so that it's visible. The idea is to have different colors on these different abilities and things, so that when you're using them, um, it's qu it's easier to see, okay, purple is got a number there, and uh, or purple is ice block, it's not moving. So I use the timer, but I put the timer exactly where the word is. So what happens is when I activate ice block, now it's off the screen, but ice block is activated as a buff, okay? And when it falls off, uh, for some reason it's not showing me the timer. That's hilarious. It's supposed to be there. Reload. Sometimes power auras does glitch out. So just do a quick reload. It should be showing me that I have three minutes of 28. Okay, there. So there it is. There. It's counting it down. So during a raid encounter, you'll notice if I've you know with Blink, I'm using Blink a lot in the Ruby Sanctum video. So you notice that Blink has got the timer there. So these are all the exact same. It's just using the ice block one, and you can copy those over. Uh, I'll show you how to do that right now. So to copy, so this is the ice block one. If I wanted to create a new one, I can just go copy and then put it into page three and it'll bring it down here. And then I can change the color to something different, go okay. And I can change the text or to, hey, and then I'm gonna slide that down and the timer I can slide down to and just over a little bit. So that's, I mean, that's the easiest way to move this stuff around is to just make, make a particular kind of power aura and then copy it over. So I'm gonna delete that because I don't actually want that one. But anyway, so we're back to, there's two minutes left on ice block which is right, but it also tells me any seconds too, so I know. What's this guy doing? Anyway. <laughs> what else do we want to do? So I see veins, mirror image, combustion. Again, they're all just checking the different abilities. But one, one thing you'll notice is I, I do set this up in order of priorities. So I see veins is top priority for me. So combustion and mirror image. So now there's nothing that I can do here. So that just tells me that I should be, uh, you know, fro uh, frost fire bolt spamming if living bombs up on the target. But as soon as I check a uh, an enemy target, it'll show what isn't on the living target or on that target that needs to be. So for example, it'd be living bomb. So. Let's check it out. So it doesn't have living bomb on it, so I'll put living bomb on it. Now it has living bomb on it. It falls off when the thing dies. <laughs> Anyways, I mean that's that's pretty much it for this. There's not a whole lot more for this UI. Talk UI does most of the heavy lifting, and power auras takes a while to set up, but it's pretty easy once you get the hang of it.
Okay. Uh, one uh, thing that I did want to show you guys is my button configuration with the G11 keyboard. So, <clears throat> this first stack of buttons here, this is the mid of the G11 on which is on my left hand basically is like where I'm using it. The macro keys. There's three groups of six buttons. Okay. So this first group here, so this top one, I want to bring up my enchanting thing. I was doing enchanting before, so I had number seven. Sorry, the top one there. So if I'm using Frost Ward or if I'm using Evocation, um, you know, I don't use Fireball, but you know I have it on there. I have two Scorches there. I don't know why. I think I wanted to have a button there. Living Bomb, Mirror Image, Fire Blast. Fire, uh, frost fire bolt. So I mean, these are the two main ones that I'm using, and then the two main abilities for a mage. And then I'm using pyroblast when it's time. You know, like when when I get my uh, procs, I can you know pop off those just pretty pretty quickly, either instant or cast. Poly, frost nova, conical, blink. So this stack here. When I press control and I press the middle, top middle button, that's my molten armor. Spell steel is the button to the left. Mana shield, button to the right. Use my wand. I see veins and combustion. So, two similar abilities sharing the same button with just an, an alternate button. Uh, mana sapphire there if I need it. Potion. Gift of the Naru, um, Invisibility, and Scroll down there. I also have Scroll up here. I don't, I don't know why it's down there too. I don't need it down there. Uh, Hellstone there if I need it. So over here, these are this stack of buttons over here is when I use Control and Shift. So Control and Shift top left is Arcane Brilliance buff. Conjure a new mana gem. Conjure some food. Or if I just want to AI somebody, just myself, or somebody else, I can do that. Uh, mounts. So for mounting, just control shift middle middle key. Blizzard and uh, flame strike I put there just because of, as a warlock I'm used to using uh, rain of fire there. So it just seemed to make sense for going to a mage. And then my uh, remove curse is bottom, bottom left. And then if I want to eat, it's top. But I mean, there's really not a lot more. Now, when I switch specs, I have a VDW spec that uses uh, a lot of extra little things. So the buttons just automatically change over to that. So. Location to get some mana back to get that ugly circle off the screen. <laughs> so for this one here, I've moved my Kona Cold to the, to this top sort of left button, and this Frost Nova, Dragon Breath there, and Blast Wave there. So it's all using the control modifier that I can do the, those CC abilities. And I'm not using Living Bomb in this spec just because there's no time to put it on. Plus, it can you know you don't want a breaking CC so. You don't bother with that. I'm just really focusing on keeping suppressors under control. Suppressing the suppressors. Anyway, um, that's it. I mean, that's really straightforward. That's the G11 keyboard. So I, I recommend it. It's a pretty sweet keyboard. It's not like some of those awesome keyboards that are way better in terms of spamming things, but I like the macros. I like having everything on the bar and everything at, in one hand so I don't have to I'm not like worrying about a bunch of different other buttons and stuff like that. Normal keyboards, like with the rows and stuff like that, it's I don't know how people do that. Like this is great just because there's gaps between the grouping of buttons too, so it's really easy to find what you're gonna do. And all my movement keys, you notice that so this button here is the same as that button, this button is the same as that one, but just with control on that one. You know, this one here is the same as that one, this one here is the same as that one. This one here is where that one is. This one here is where that one is. Oh, lots of lag. Beautiful, beautiful molten lag. 
<laughs> anyway, that's it.